Hi there. In this QuickBooks Online video, we'll look at payroll. Um, now, payroll doesn't work with the test drive, um, which I've been using previously, so we do need to create a trial version or a trial account for this um, online version of the, of the uh, program, or uh, there's an educational version available. So I created an educational login for myself. So that is it's going to go to quickbooks.intuit.com CA and I'll choose there we go there it is there I'll choose sign in QuickBooks online and I'll quickly log in with my educational version account that I've created previously So this is a brand new account that's never been used before. So I'm just going to quickly choose uh, Bookkeeper for a role. And all set. And I'll choose Payroll. And get started. So um, in this scenario, we have some brand new employees. We've never paid them. We just hired them. So I'm going to choose no. Next. Um, I'll make my payday Friday. And I'll add my location. It's East Broadway. And I'm just going to add myself as the payroll contact. And I'm going to choose Add Employee. So again, um, we haven't paid anybody in any other payroll system. They're brand new employees. New employers, no T4s, so I'm going to say no, I'm a brand new employer. And continue. And then I'll add my new employee. Hire date, I'm going to say today, which is Wednesday. And I'm just going to add myself as the email so we can receive all of the correspondence so we can see what it looks like. Um, so Mary is, uh, she's got a very simple life. So when I enter this TD1 form, I'm going to enter date, her date of birth. So it does require this exact format. So see, she is 10. 07 1988 we don't have an employee number and her social insurance number it will allow a placeholder social social insurance number so I use uh, three ones and an eight or sorry um, eight ones and an eight and she's at 3394 Wellington and work equivalent. And A3B for H9. No employee number. She's a resident of Canada. And again, just the basic amount. So what that means is the number of pay peers divided into that amount. Um, if they're less than the result of that, then she pays no taxes for that pay period. And I'm going to leave the provincial taxes at their default. 
uh, tax exemption, so she is uh, not um, at at the age of 65. She has the option of not having CPP deducted, and then once she reaches 70, definitely no CPP. And um, once she turns uh, 18, CPP is automatically deducted. She's over 18, and she's not um, yeah, and she's younger than uh, 65, and she's not exempt from employment insurance or federal income tax. So I can choose done for this section. And I'll create a pay schedule. We pay her every Friday. So her next payday is on the third. And the end of the next pay period is the end of this is the next payday. The end of the next pay period is pay period is one week. The tenth. So pay period. The next pay period is fourth to the tenth. And it asks us if this will be the default schedule. We can always choose a different schedule for our employees later. I'll choose save and we pay her notice it only gives you one rate when we're adding the employee but when we edit the employee we can actually add more rates so she is uh, 1850 and she works um, seven hours per day five days a week We can actually add more. It seems like this is the only um, pay that's available, stat holiday pay. If you, but if you click on the little pencil there, you can add overtime and double overtime. And I'll choose save. Um, vacation policy, so we're in BC. Once somebody works five days, they're entitled to 4% uh, vacation. We don't have any custom deductions or contributions. We'll set up workers' compensation in a minute. And we're going to pay her with a paper check. So we're all done with that employee. I'll just add the one employee. Um, I don't think I need to edit her at all. So I'll just choose done. And it says I'm ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and rate this. So um, it says we're ready to, to uh, start creating paychecks, but I just need to quickly add the WCB amount as well. So we can go up to the gear icon and then payroll settings. and then workers compensation and I'm going to choose set up now so we're in British Columbia I'm going to say she's an office worker and uh, in British Columbia WorkSafe BC lets us know what our rate is um, I'm going to say decimal 7 is what they told us effective today and save so I'm all set. I've got all of my uh, my hours, payroll schedule, um, all of the required deductions as far as the government's concerned. So to uh, go ahead and pay her, if I just go to employees and I choose run payroll, and I choose, uh, so she has I'm going to actually just change this slightly. I'm going to say on Monday she works um, 13 hours. So I'm going to change this to 36. And then overtime, 4, and then 1 hour double overtime. She's not getting paid out any vacation pay. This is if she takes her 
uh, a day for a vacation or something like that, half a day for a vacation, we could pay her out of that vacation pay on her regular check. Bank account, I'm just gonna say payroll account. I don't have any bank accounts set up with this company yet. I'm just using this company just for payroll. Um, so I would have a bank account I could choose from. And this will be for this pay period, but this looks like it's not editable. Like you can, it looks like you can't choose another pay period, but we, they are available there. So if you need to pay for the next pay period today to try it out, you can. But this is actually accurate for this paycheck. I'll choose preview payroll. And then that looks good to me. There's the taxes. So taxes, by taxes they mean um, federal, provincial, CPP, and EI. And I'll just submit payroll. I'll just go ahead and say that's pretty good. And we're not using direct deposit, I'm just printing paper checks. If I use direct deposit, I'd actually be paying this. So. I'm just going to choose one. And I'll finish payroll. Uh, so the taxes, this is what, what they're talking about is remitting the taxes that we deduct. We have to remit once a month generally. So I'm going to choose set up taxes now. And I'll go to set up. And I'll choose let's go. And it already populates the information with what I entered previously. So that's all it needed. I'll choose next. Um, when we pay our employees, we're required in Canada to set up a Service Canada account. They would give us the, the numbers that we would enter here. But they're not required. So I'm going to go ahead and choose done for this. So now if we want to remit, let me just quickly uh, create three more paychecks and that'll be a month's worth that we need to remit in January for December. So I'll quickly just go to employees, run payroll. So we have a full month's worth of deductions. So in order to remit the amounts that we deducted to the government, we choose the taxes tab and then payroll tax and pay. And I'll choose yes. And due date, and I'm just gonna pay this uh, on January 10th. So that's check number five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And record and print. And this, this check I would actually send off to the receiver general. And I'm going to archive that as well. So that's um, setting up payroll. Um, adding an employee, paying the employee, and then remitting those deductions. We'll look at uh, more detailed payroll in later videos. Thanks so much for watching.